Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody joining us around the world today for our Punch Out To Go webinar, B2B Punch Out Supplier Best Practices. Very excited to have all of you here today. Joining myself, uh, Brady Berman, I'm the CEO at Punch Out To Go. I also have Carrie Cress and Ryan Clements that will be partaking in this adventure with us today in this hour. Our agenda is uh, ever encompassing this B2B strategy. Uh, first topic is gonna be the e-procurement market overview then supplier enablement, supplier best practices, benefits for suppliers, punch out to go overview, and then a Q&A session at the end where I will answer any of the questions that you have. So with that, I'd like to turn things over to Mr. Ryan Clements, our VP of operations, to take you on the e-procurement market overview journey. Ryan, take it away. Great. Thank you, Brady. Again, my name is Ryan Clements. I'm the VP of operations for punch out to go one of my roles here, of course, is focusing on our delivery operation, ensuring successful outcomes across our project teams. But where I also get to have some fun is in the focus I apply to our buyer side initiatives. When I engage with buying organizations, one of the things I always make a practice of is trying to educate them around supplier considerations and potential challenges, depending on where their supplier base may be in their e-commerce journeys. In essence, to the buyer, I try to speak to the supplier's perspective. Where we'd like to begin today's conversation is talking with you about e-procurement from a buyer's perspective. I would assume that most of the audience today has some type of e-commerce strategy or are in the process of forming one. What I'd like you to think about is how that strategy aligns with your buyer's e-procurement strategy and the challenges they're facing. So to start, we have another quick poll for you. What percent of your customers do you think are leveraging e-procurement systems to transact with you today? All right, it's definitely an interesting mix. On our first slide, we'll look at a few statistics and some key findings of market research. First, let's note that 50% of companies out there already use some form of e-procurement software, with another 33% planning on implementing soon. And this makes sense when you think about it. The global B2B market is expected to reach $6 trillion by 2020. With such a huge potential comes challenges for both buyer and seller. There is no doubt B2B is complex. And this is because of its characteristics like high variability in pricing, significant transaction frequency, logistics and supply chain factors, regulatory considerations, and also many types of financial pressures. B2B also has several channels, including direct relationships, both traditional and online, e procurement supplier networks, and industry specific marketplaces. Suppliers need to be able to integrate across all of these channels as buyers are shifting to a many-to-many -many model for sourcing. And to accommodate this shift, the growth, the complexity of B2B, parties on both sides are migrating to more nimble cloud-based platforms that offer the latest tools and desired functionalities. So with that, the e-procurement market is naturally growing. But what else drives this growth? One leading driver is buying organizations wanting to leverage new opportunities in market, which includes interacting with new suppliers and marketplaces in a more sophisticated ways. This, of course, creates a very competitive sourcing environment. Other key drivers include transacting electronically with their supplier base and a host of other electronic integration potentials, better catalog management, and more overall efficiency across the transaction cycles. To support this, supplier networks are evolving too. And supplier enablement and spend management are key principles of that evolution. Besides the concepts of buyers shifting towards a many-to-many -to -many model for procurement, Integration and electronic transacting are now core requirements. Realize that buying organizations are growing in their own complexity. Procurement is solving for areas beyond just core spend, and they're also attempting to distribute controlled purchasing across their organization. Therefore, it is no longer just about what they are buying. It's about who is buying, governance, <laughs> the interests of departments like IT, legal, sales, and finance. Therefore, collaboration capabilities are key here. And the pressures are clear. Demand and complexity are increasing, especially when we factor global considerations. Take, for example, China. They represent 30% of that $6.7 trillion. Your trading partners may see competitive opportunity, or they may see threats. Core to those threats, or to that opportunity, is spend management, visibility, and increased capability. So if we go to the next slide, 
we understand the landscape a little better, let's focus on some of the challenges procurement professionals face in their day to day. Supplier related issues is number one. Many suppliers put a great value on the relationship with their buyers, naturally. But how many are extending that fully to their relationship with procurement? The ease of supplier management and procurement's own measure of supplier performance can make or break some relationships, regardless of how well established they are. That's really important to know. Strategy selection, number two. Procurement is a top strategic player within an organization. Procurement professionals today are powerful change agents, and they are very protective of their goals and successful outcomes. There's naturally the desire to reduce costs and achieve savings, but keep in mind, cost savings come in many forms, and the lowest cost of goods is only one driver. There are significant savings found in transactional efficiencies, process automation, error rate reduction, and this leads us to number four, accurate data. Spend management tools, like all technology, are becoming more sophisticated at an exponential rate. As organizations rely more on these tools, good data is essential, and bad data is immediately visible. And who are we making this bad data visible to? Many more stakeholders. Recall from the prior slide that procurement is organizational wide. It is about more than just the nuts and bolts of buying. It's a larger force of change within the organization. Many more stakeholders are involved, many more are paying attention, and many of them have their own objectives and demands to meet. Generally, one of those is around mitigating risk. Maverick spend and purchasing compliance have always been and always are a big challenge for most companies. E-procurement platforms are empowering organizations to distribute purchasing across the organization, and they're also affecting the level of control essential to mitigate the associated risk of doing so. So of course, tools and technology make the list. Number seven, there are virtually no barriers to finding a number of possible solutions. An ever-growing number of e-procurement platforms exist, and they service companies of all sizes, industries, and verticals. The challenge today is sorting through the sheer volume of options out there, and then generating buy-in to implement them. Realize that implementing these tools and technologies are strategic for an organization, and it requires an intense amount of change management to implement successfully. Adoption is key to utilization, both internally and with the supplier base. When we get down towards the bottom of the list, we have recruiting, retaining, and training talent. And we all share this challenge at some level. Procurement is complex, finding and managing good talent is complex, and aligning that talent's expectation of technology tools is definitely a challenge especially when you consider generational differences within the organizations. Finally, we have the challenges of time and RFX process. What's important to remember here, today's e-procurement platforms create a lot of visibility. It's very easy to evaluate supplier performance, and suppliers must be able to act quickly and efficiently, as buyers are often working against their own time constraints that we have to be considerate of. So if we go to the next slide, We'll wrap up the buyer's journey with how e-procurement and the various platforms out there solve for some of those challenges. On the right hand of the slide, we have some benefits which are mostly buyer focused. For example, reducing the procurement cycle time, enforcing buying policies, automating procure to pay processes, and increasing spend visibility. But many of those are also supplier benefits as well. Your successful interaction with procurement teams and e-procurement platforms can position you as a preferred supplier. This drives higher levels of customer service across the board, from your actual buyers all the way through procurement, accounting, IT, and compliance teams. Implementing the right e-commerce strategy with a good understanding of e-procurement trends can create access to new sales opportunities, both with existing and new, or new organizations. Doing this well can also lower your overall cost to transact with them. Finally, transactional efficiency and data integrity drive higher levels of automation for suppliers as well, which results in faster payments, fewer customer service issues and billing disputes, and ultimately a more collaborative and functional relationship. So on our last slide, I'd like to shift our focus back to the landscape for supplier enablement. Core transactions you typically need to support for e-procurement include orders and invoices, 
supplementals like order confirmations and ship notices, and of course, ways to access your catalog content with hosted catalogs or punch out being the primary standards. And we'll talk more about the differences between those later. Now, when we think about those in the context of all the channels you support, such as your direct transactions via your website, email, customer support, and indirect transactions for marketplaces, supplier networks, and their respective portals. And then of course you have direct electronic transactions for punch out, PO, and invoice. We can quickly see that the supplier enablement is a complex landscape with a lot of overlapping relationships. The good news is there are solid solutions and approaches to tackling this complexity. So with that, I have one more poll for you, and then we'll turn it over to Carrie Kress to talk more about supplier best practices. How would you rate your company's ability to meet your customers' e procurement requirements? Great job, Ryan. It looks like the results are coming in by 80% through. And we'll close it. These are your results. All right. Thank you again, Ryan. We're going to go ahead and switch gears now and look at supplier best practices. Uh, and with that, we are going to turn things over to Ms. Carrie Kress. Thank you, Brady. And thank you, Ryan, for that informative overview of e-procurement market and supplier enablement. Uh, good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Carrie Kress, and I'm the Vice President of Partner Success at punch out to go During my career, I've had the opportunity to lead e-business initiatives related to e-procurement as a supplier. And I've worked closely with punch out to go customers gaining important insights into best practices. As a previous supplier, I knew my customers were demanding that we transact electronically with them or we were at risk of losing business. However, it was challenging in the beginning to find the information and resources available to educate myself, educate my leadership team on e-procurement. I found that there was not much information or resources available to help me and my team understand or navigate the various e-procurement opportunities, learn about the various systems that our customers were using, what results other suppliers were realizing from doing business through this channel, and what was the recipe for success. Today, we wanna to pass along some of those best practices to help you be successful. So let's talk about evolution of business commerce. The majority of suppliers began down the path of B2B e-procurement by complying with that first customer request. This usually involves responding to an RFP that requires punch out catalog or B2B order capabilities in order to keep or win that business uh, with this potential customer. After figuring out the technology requirements, evaluating current system capabilities, understanding what gaps that you have, get a plan in place, to meet that first customer's need, and eventually you have that first integrated account. That first request usually can take many, many months. It's not easy and it's difficult, but you find a way to make it work. Then ongoing to responsive, you've complied with that first request, and now you begin to receive other requests from customers and begin to make adjustments to be able to meet those requests. Often at this time, suppliers may reach out to a third-party integration partner, such as punch out to go to deal with the custom mapping and requirements as requirements from buyer to buyer and e-procurement and e-procurement system are complex and are very different. The majority of suppliers in today's market fall into this enablement phase. The best in class punch out suppliers are in the, this transformation stage. They have the enablement piece, it's a well-oiled machine. They're able to go live quickly with customer integrations, sometimes in hours. With new customer integrations, uh, they don't have a backlog. They're able to get through those quickly. These suppliers gain a competitive advantage by becoming proactive and innovative. These suppliers see the value of being directly integrated with their customer's e-procurement system and they focus on creating processes and the infrastructure and the resources to support their B2B commerce business. These suppliers then move into innovative strategies and tactics to drive that channel growth that result in increased sales, customer retention, customer satisfaction. So let's pause here uh, just for a moment and take a short poll. How would you rate your company's current commerce evolution? Are you in the reactive stage? Are you in the responsive stage? 
proactive or innovative. Okay, so it looks like uh, we're pretty split across reactive, responsive, and proactive. Very good. All right, the best practices uh, that we will share with you today for those are those suppliers that are looking to move from that reactive, responsive stage into the more um, proactive and in that transformation phase. So first, let's talk about how to identify opportunities within the e-procurement channel. First, you need to start off by identifying your largest customers. So in terms of spend and order volume, put that list together and focus on your largest customers to start with. Next, you want to identify and gain access to procurement stakeholders at your largest customer accounts. This might be the director of purchasing, this might be a chief procurement officer, or a director of strategic sourcing. It's important to identify who within procurement at your largest accounts oversees their supplier management and relationships. If you run into any roadblocks in trying to access the right procurement stakeholder, you can also try to navigate by leveraging one of your end user customers as a coach. Ask that end user customer, let them know that you are interested in speaking with someone in procurement and try to make inroads that way of having them make an introduction. Once you have a meeting secured with the appropriate procurement stakeholders, you want to ask discovery questions to cover how employees can purchase from suppliers and if they are utilizing an e-procurement marketplace. To better assist you with the discovery questions, Punch Out To Go has created some example questions that you may want to ask when meeting with procurement. The questions focus on understanding their overall business goals and general processes. So for example, what are the different ways employees can procure products from vendors within this company? How does procurement interact with the individual buyers or end users at that company? Just try to assess what influence does procurement have over those end users in their purchasing decisions? How can you best demonstrate cost savings and gains in efficiency to better partner with them? It's also important to uncover if procurement has adopted a preferred supplier or a strategic supplier model. Some organizations adopt this approach in order to drive spend to certain suppliers for certain commodities in order to gain additional savings for their organization. Example questions include uncovering if they do have a strategy, what is the criteria to be a preferred or strategic supplier, and asking who their preferred suppliers are. Some procurement stakeholders will give you a list of who their preferred suppliers are, and that is often a way to identify if any of your competitors are integrated with them or, and are on that list. Finally, you want to understand if they are using an e-procurement system to manage spend, and if so, what type of system? Is there a specific criteria used to allow vendors to integrate and to provide online catalogs? and what type of catalog formats for transacting electronically do they prefer. So once you've identified opportunities for business within e-procurement channel, it is important to, for you to obtain alignment and support from your executive leadership and key decision makers. You wanted them to be your champion in order to, to drive these initiatives across the business. Another best practice is establishing a cross-functional e-business steering committee to drive the channel strategy initiatives, outline business processes, and educate those across your company that need to be aware. So let's pause again just for a short poll. So within your company, which departments oversees your e-business strategy and initiatives? Is it IT, because that's their job? Is it sales, because they always need to be selling? Is it marketing? So they're getting the message out internally and externally. Is it all of the above or none of the above? All right, so it looks like a good mix. 9% IT, we have a mixture of sales, marketing, all of the above and none of the above. So e-business strategy initiatives should really not be led in silos. It should really be a cross-functional team composed of IT and sales, business development, marketing, uh, customer service support, they should all be involved. Um, also, from your executive leadership team, there should be an executive sponsor uh, for this steering committee. Putting this team together ensures that all voices are heard regarding the technology infrastructure, 
the voice of the customer, what that user experience is, and the strategy your organization is going to take for this channel. It keeps all departments aligned and to ensure everyone is marching towards the same goals for success. So other best practices to be aware of includes having the right technology to meet your customers' needs. As in our own consumer experiences, technology is always changing, and that is true in B2B. Best-in-class suppliers make continuous improvements in their e-commerce infrastructure and the customer's shopping experience. Customers expect to have a shopping experience that's similar to our personal consumer lives. They expect to be able to select favorites in order to have quick reordering, the ability to have a request for quote. They expect to be able to see the correct product offering and corresponding contracted pricing when they're in these marketplaces and shopping. Also, as more B2B customers are moving to ordering through mobile devices, it is also important that your e-commerce system is responsive and provides an easy and seamless shopping experience for your end users. Another best practice is offering full B2B order to invoice automation capabilities, leveraging existing your existing e-commerce infrastructure with the ability to support punch out catalog, electronic purchase order and electronic invoicing capabilities. Large buying organizations are looking to automate the whole procure to pay process with suppliers. And if you're able to provide these capabilities. This will help you find buyers that are ready to purchase, accelerate the sales cycle, they'll improve customer retention, and ultimately lower your cost to serve your customers because processes are automated. They're not requiring manual, manual intervention. Investing in B2B order to invoice capabilities makes it easy for your customers to do business with you. Some buying organizations will not be able to support all B2B capabilities at this point. Some might not be able to accept electronic invoices or send electronic purchase orders right now, but most likely we'll have these capabilities in the nearest future as technology advances and more and more uh, buying organizations adopt procurement systems. For those buying organizations that can support all capabilities today, a best practice is to seek full inter integration when the business warrants it. Best-in-class suppliers have realized great benefits from complete B2B integrations. For example, Gulvin International, they grew existing account 1600% with Punch-Out integration. Cellular Accessories for Less, they have realized 32% revenue increase from existing customers due to ease of use. Our longtime customer of Punch Out To Go, Masumi, they have realized 32% sales growth on integrated accounts and 90% reduction in operating costs. And Fastenal, they have seen the benefit of 83% PO error rate reduction by seeking full integration with their customers. These are just a few of the examples of how doing business through procurement with your customers can positively impact your business. Getting the right technology in place and managing full B2B integrations can be a daunting task for suppliers. Each procurement system is different and buyers on each procurement system have different requirements. Enterprise to mid-market to small companies often turn to third-party integration providers to help accelerate onboarding time with customer integrations. These help with data translation and also mapping. The supplier logo is listed here, just a small snapshot of those that have been listed punch out to go to help provide the technology platform and support to quickly integrate and do business with their e-procurement customers. Any new initiatives for an organization requires change management and training. Some best practices to consider in this area include educating and training your company resources on your B2B capabilities, why customers use e-procurement systems, and why is it important to do business in this channel? This may include training your sales or business development team, marketing, IT, customer service, support, anyone within the organization that needs to understand the importance of this channel and make sure that everyone is aligned. Also, develop and arm your sales resources with tools such as demos of your punch out website, sales presentation, sell sheets outlining the benefits of your capabilities to potential prospects. And develop a B2B e-procurement playbook that outlines your capabilities, key terms to know, discovery questions to ask to identify opportunities for your sales resources. 
Finally, once all this hard work has come together, how do you leverage your capabilities and drive growth in the B2B e-procurement channel? Best practices include focusing customer-facing sales resources on promoting your capabilities, identifying potential targets, and growing the channel. Sometimes suppliers will use a comp plan and or a SPIF program in order to incentivize these sales resources on growing this channel. Be proactive and ask procurement for a punch out catalog spot on the e-procurement marketplace and to integrate electronically. If you're currently doing business with the buying organization and you're not integrated, they will likely welcome the fact that you ha now have these capabilities and will give your company a spot because they want to have that spend and, and visibility into that spend within their procurement system. Partner with your procurement stakeholders in your account. Procurement is tasked with bringing additional cost savings to the organization and getting as much spend under management through their procurement system. Understand what their goals and challenges are and what can your company do to partner with them to bring value. And possibly this could give you a competitive advantage over your competition. And finally, market, 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 and market some more. I cannot stress how important it is to continuously market your capabilities to target customers. And once you do have integrations in place with customers, and it's important to continue to market the channel to drive user adoption. Partnering with procurement also comes into play here as they can help send out emails and other communications to end users, letting them know that you have a punch out site available and driving those end users to order from you through that marketplace. So key takeaways today in summary, um, to be successful in doing business with your customers leveraging e-procurement systems, you need to one, identify the customer need, then build the business case and gain that executive support. You need to break down those silos, establish an e-business team to lead the charge. You want to get the technology right and offer full B2B capabilities. If you build it, they don't always come. Remember, you need to ask for a spot and you need to market your capabilities. And then continue to drive growth through continuous education, leveraging customer facing resources and marketing to current and potential target customers. I'll now turn it uh, back over to Brady Berman, who will provide you more details around Punch Out catalogs, supplier benefits and Punch Out to Go. Wonderful, thank you so much, Carrie, and thank you all again for Joining us today, so now I want to talk about punch out catalogs and kind of the differences between uh, different types of catalogs that exist. Hosted catalogs are static files uh, that you may be providing to your customers for them to load into their procurement systems. These static files are very antiquated and in many cases, often very much limited to a couple of columns of data, not an enriched type of experience that your product deserves to be represented of. However, they are requirements in some cases by many buying organizations. Uh, punch out catalogs offers the ability for your organization to present your e-commerce application that best suits your product offering to your customers in real time, right? So it's your e-commerce application, providing the enriched product data that you have built and the experience that best meets your customer's needs. Uh, and the ability to order obviously configurable products and have pick up quotes, all the great things that you've learned throughout this presentation so far, and all the things that you are doing and evolving uh, as you are building out your e-commerce strategies uh, should be a very important piece as it relates to e-procurement. The actual punch out process, it basically is a mechanism that allows an end user that is leveraging these e-procurement systems such as Ariba and Coupa and many others, allows them to authenticate from that system directly into your e-commerce application. Uh, once they're at your store, your store recognizes who they are, reflects the offering the best way it's supposed to. The end user can add items to their cart. And the biggest difference with punch out is that the end user is not gonna proceed through a normal checkout. They are instead gonna be transferring the line item details back into their procurement system to route for approvals. Once approved, that's when a purchase order gets sent and you fulfill the actual order. We're going to talk about supplier benefits now. So benefits of e-procurement. For your customers, the buyers enhances their shopping experience, streamlines the order process, reduces cycle times, lowers procurement cost, increases order accuracy, 
and automates the entire order to invoice process where possible. For your business, obviously keeping that business is important, uh, but expanding the sales reach, uh, your product and pricing availability, all the great features that you again may have to make it easy for your customers to purchase from you. Uh, this is a very sticky channel. Uh, once we don't see many integrations get turned off, uh, you'll increase customer satisfaction uh, and faster invoice equals faster payment turnaround. So it's a win for you uh, and a win for your customers, a win for you threefold. Real benefits is obviously again, growth in existing accounts, uh, growth in new business, upsell and cross sell to your buyers. It's not always the lowest price that wins in these relationships with procurement as well. Uh, you'll accelerate the sales cycle, faster deal closure, increased order accuracy with punch out, faster order processing with B2B order automation. You'll improve customer retention, common buying behavior established, increase customer satisfaction, easy to do business with, streamline and automate the ordering process by exchanging electronic POs and invoices, uh, obviously lowers the cost to serve those customers. Just do a little exercise. If you get orders from customers, which you do, maybe they're coming in through fax or email, think about what it takes for somebody to receive that order. Manually key that into your system. Think about the errors, the, the time, the labor. We've seen some large companies spend upwards of a hundred plus dollars to manually deal with one single order that may be a dollar or a million dollar order, doesn't matter. Start adding all that up, it, it becomes, uh, incredibly efficient for you to look to automate where at all possible and you'll reduce those ordering errors so oh, my favorite part of this is our is punch out to go overview uh, so i started punch out to go in uh, march 2012 and we're headquartered in charlottesville virginia uh, with our new international office over in, in europe in dublin ireland which we're very excited about uh, the guinness is, is much better over there by the way if you're interested we built Punch Out to Go with the core focus of helping organizations leverage their own infrastructure, whatever that may be today and in the future. Very important for continuity. And we do this very well. And we serve thousands and tens of thousands of actually integrations around the world. And we've never lost a customer, which we're very proud of. And we support these companies of all sizes from small mom and pops to big giants and everything in between the same exact way driving value to help them increase efficiency, automate processes, and do business the way that their customers want to do business. Our go-to-market is helping companies, again, leverage their own infrastructure. To date, we're supporting over 50 different packaged kind of e-commerce platforms, such as Magento and BigCommerce, Insight, Hybris, WebSphere, and many others. And this number is constantly growing as e-commerce platforms look to partner with punch out to go because we're the best at what we do helping to integrate these types of processes while helping organizations leverage their own infrastructure uh, as well as order automation obviously outside of the punch out there's a lot of different procurement systems to market if i go back a decade ago when we first started doing punch out integrations uh, you only had really ariba and oracle and peoplesoft and a couple others to date, we've supported, uh, I think it's upwards of 150 different e-procurement systems. And those numbers are growing all the time as well. We're finding new procurement providers coming to market weekly. And we're usually the first to integrate with even new e-procurement providers. Prior to Punch Out The Go, and, and companies have faced this, they, they ended up building bespoke one-off type of integrations with each one of their customers. Even though you may have multiple customers on one system, those individual customers will have unique requirements in almost all cases. So Punch Out To Go comes in and we paint this really pretty picture of integrating once with Punch Out To Go so that we can help you then deliver and integrate with any of your customers on any procurement system as a managed process. Supporting again of the orders and invoicing processes is, is mission critical to your success and, and lowering the cost to serve your customers. We provide all these services as well. And we support every transactional document supported throughout the e-procurement ecosystem. CXML is very prominent, different variations, different versions. Uh, OCI also is prominent in your SAP type of integrations, as well as XML EDI and, and all these other documents. We also provide our punch out to go portal. Provides real-time visibility of every movement going to and from systems. Our customers find great value in this tool. The ability to trace transactions from start to finish, 
reporting and analytics and self-service tools. The biggest part of this takeaway of our project overview is our well-baked plan on helping manage these types of integrations on your behalf. And with that, we thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please do make sure to put them in the question tab. Uh, and we'll start going through those here in just a moment. All right, I got a couple of questions. Uh, Carrie, in your past experience, uh, you, you mentioned that you were working with different strategies as it related. Was there any really bottlenecks that you faced as it related to connecting with procurement? Yeah, that we, uh, in, in my past experience, um, and also in talking with other, you know, suppliers, there are there are bottlenecks of trying to understand what your buyer's requirements are and how you meet those, how those mappings work. We had our IT team that that would do these these integrations and and why we had a great IT team. They were great at SAP, but they weren't great mm -hmm. in understand e procurement integrations per se. Right, so we had to reach out uh, to some providers um, to, to help us with that because we started to have a backlog of integrations and, and customers demanding this. And in order to keep up, we needed to scale quickly for that. Great answer, great answer. <clears throat> Another question around e-commerce applications. So with so many e-commerce applications on the market, is there particular e-commerce platforms that are best suited for punch out? The answer there is, is no, there's not really an e-commerce platform that's best suited. Uh, the answer is what is the best platform for you to use, whether it's a, a big commerce or, or a Magento or a WebSphere, whatever's best suited to serve up your product experiences is the e-commerce application you should choose. Let's see, we got another one. Any tips for finding out what companies have punch out? We don't know where to start or who to ask. So I'm not sure if this is a buyer or a seller, uh, but you can actually reach out to Punch Out to Go, and we we'll can help you try to identify uh, companies that have Punch Out. If you are a seller and you're asking this question, if you if you think back to earlier in the slide uh, where Carrie was talking about looking at some of the largest customers that you have, uh, it's in looking at those largest customers that uh, we can help you identify if those customers are leveraging e-procurement systems so we can take that up with you afterwards but you can navigate the actual users of your customers to find out who leads procurement uh, google is a great place to start if you're looking for procurement for a particular customer uh, of yours or a prospect so you might want to leverage those types of uh, tactics there all right so i think that with that we'll wrap up i thank you everybody again for your time today hope this has been very much educational thank you so much